Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and I am back today with a review for you, and that is of the Custom Cans modification of the Hi Feynman HE400 SE open back around ear planar magnetic headphone. Custom Cans is a UK based headphone modification company and cable maker, and they named this the HE400SEXY, or the HE400SEXY. Well done, guys. Well done. Okay? And so, uh, this came into my possession because when I released my Hi Feynman Sundara closed back review, I got a comment from Jason at Custom Cans who said, hey, we like your work uh, and we have a headphone that we think is the best sounding headphone under 200 English pounds. And we want you to give a listen to it and be brutally honest about whether or not we have hit that benchmark. And so I, first of all, respect that a lot because I don't know that I've ever had a manufacturer or a maker come out and say, we think we have the best thing at a given price point. Be brutally honest as to whether or not you think that's true too. So hats off to the folks at Custom Cans. So in further talks, they sent this to me for review and here I am ready to review it. So uh, Custom Cans is not paying me at all. This is not staying here. Hopefully I get this out to some other US based reviewers for some more opinions on this. Uh, so, uh, and then beyond that, other than informing me about some of the technical things they did to make this modification what it is, Custom Cans has made no attempt to influence my opinion in one way or the other. And again, they gave me carte blanche to be brutally honest. So I normally am, but again, I respect them for saying that explicitly. So we'll get into shameless self-promotion, then we'll come back on the other side, we'll get into pricing and what they did to make this mod and all of those things. So here we go, on with the commercial. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't, please subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon set up so that you can help support me on a monthly basis, and I've set up a PayPal donation so that you can help me out in that way too if a monthly dis a subscription does not make sense for you. Links for all of that, including the benefits, in the description below. Please check those out. All right, on with the show. All right, so the HE400 Sexy from Custom Cans. And let's see, pricing. So they said that they think it's the best sounding headphone under 200 English pounds. They currently have it on their website, which I will link to down below. I'll also link to their YouTube channel, uh, which they have there uh, down below in the description as well. They currently list this for 199.01 uh, English pounds. According to Google, that translates to about 240 US dollars here as of the filming of this video at the current exchange rate. And I filmed this on December 22nd, 2022. <coughs> All right, uh, they sent in the package one of their cables too. They call this their, I think this is just their ultimate cable here. This one is a four pin XLR balanced cable at the amp end. And then it's got this neat like ribbon, like almost a lanyard material kind of thing with these four, you might see it better on the yellow side, four wires in there all kind of flattened out. Okay, ribbon, and then it terminates in this one because it's with a hi fi -man headphone, terminates in a dual 3.5 millimeter uh, connection system on the headphone end. And so like I said, these guys are headphone modders and they are cable makers. And so this is, I think they said they use some kind of a lit uh, cable in here. And then they have this, like I've not seen a cable made with this flat ribbon style um, in there too. So this cable, they are charging 180 uh, English pounds for, and that translates to just over 216 US dollars if you're interested in that. So I will make some comments about using this cable and how it sounds here at the end of the video. We're going to talk about the headphone first. Okay. So back to that headphone. So it is a Hi Feynman HE400 SE mod. And I still have my stock HE400 SE right here. 
okay, which I use for comparison and all that. And I do have a review of this up, which went out, I don't know, like maybe March or April of, of 2022. And I will link to that down below too. And I, this was a good starting point for them to use because I, if you also saw a video I did back in August of 2022 where I talked about getting into the hobby and where to start, I think this is one of the best introductory audiophile buys out there um, because the uh, price on this is currently 109 US dollars and it's an open back planar and it sounds pretty good. It has a little bit of a treble peak in it, which can get fatiguing after a while and is made worse by the stock cable it comes with, Okay, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and, and it also requires a little bit more power than other uh, headphones at this price point, but not ridiculously so. Okay, So those are kind of the drawbacks, but in terms of the overall sonics, this is a really excellent starting point because the planar magnetic drivers in here are very capable. So as I understand the description of what Jason at Custom Cans told me via email and then also what is up on their webpage for this guy here, is they did um, several things to the mod. So one thing that you'll notice is that they put different pads on it and they just call these the angled pads. And I can't tell you if they make these pads themselves or if they order them from somewhere, but they're pretty thick and they're pretty soft and there's like, you know, they're thicker on the inside too. That so, I mean, they look like that around your ear, whereas the stock pads are, you know, more of a circular opening on the inside there. Okay. Now they also like refit the way the pads mount on there so that you can like put the fire dynamic pads on these things as well, if that is of interest to you. All right, so again, the starting price here, uh, 240 USD, and I say that because um, there are some upgrade options that you have that will raise the price from there. You can get the headphone, uh, the headband modified a little bit. I think there's, they say they put a notch here. This notch that you see is because it was hanging on a, a coat hook, basically, a double wide coat hook, where I have all of the headphones that I have in-house, not all, because it's outgrown it already, but, um, I've got a wall full of hanging headphones over there. And so the weight of this one, which we'll get back to in a minute, put a notch there. These guys will put one in there. This notch didn't help to supposedly help with comfort. And that's important. We'll get into that uh, for a moment, but you can ask for a headphone, a headband modification. Then other things that they do is they will do a custom paint job for you. There are cover like grill options here on the back. And then there are several cable options and all of those will increase the price a little bit. Okay, but I will link to the website and you can play around with those options um, as you wish. Now, this particular mod here, this particular unit was one of their prototypes. And I think if I understand correctly, it's what went to, into production too and, uh, and all that. So you can see they definitely did a custom paint job with the blue uh, there and the gold sparkly paint uh, accents on it. They changed this part right here where the yoke enters the headband. Like you can see that there was hi Feynman branding on it. And then, you know, the model name there. Like, so that has been redesigned. You can also see that the ear cup is thicker. Okay, it's got more depth to it than the stock HE400 SE. At least it's beveled less, I should say. Here on the end it's probably got the same amount of depth it's just it's less angled here okay right there now this is a redesigned cup internally and one thing that they talk about uh, on their website and then with me via email is that they redesigned the internals of the cup here to improve airflow so that the driver is the driver membrane is a little bit more free to vibrate without extra air currents and air pressures in there. So that is another thing that they did. Then you can also see they changed the cup entry to have like this Odyssey style forward pointing um, dual 3.5 millimeter cup entry system as opposed to just plugging them in straight with these notched openings here that are almost straight down there, angled a little bit forward on the HE400 SE, but not by much, not nearly to this level. So this allows the cable to like, not just hang on your shoulders, but come down a little bit in case that's, a, you know, if that's something that bothers you. 
um, there. All right. So those are the modifications that they make to this. And so other build aspects that I notice here is that this is a bit on the heavier side. Like I put these on postal scales. The stock HE400SE has a mass of 380 grams and the sexy it clocks in at 475. And then similar construction, this is my Hi Feynman HE6SEV2. You can see it's built about the same way. I have added this lobe strap right here for added comfort. So this assembly right here is 535 grams. Okay. So um, it's not quite as heavy as the HE6SE V2, but not super far behind either. And I bring that up because my biggest single complaint about this headphone probably is not a sonic one, it's a comfort thing. And that is, I definitely get a, head, a hot spot from the headband right here on the top of my head when I put this thing on. So I cannot wear it for very long. By the time I get like four or five tracks in, average length music tracks into my listening, I'm already starting to feel it and it's getting a little bit bothersome at that point. So I was not sent the notched headband, so I don't know uh, how much that helps, um, but it is an option to consider or some other kind of thing like the lobe strap here on the HE6 SEV2 works wonders. Like it really helps a lot. So that might be something to look into, but these are like 45-ish, $50 on eBay, I want to say, and they also come from a UK maker. Um, so that's going to increase the cost, but I imagine will increase the comfort quite a bit. Now, the reason that I did not um, switch this onto this headphone to give it a try is because this elastic right here does not open very much, and you have to actually take these screws out and remove the cup to slip the, um, slip the thing on and off, and I just didn't want to do that level here when this is only going to be staying for like three, four weeks. Okay. So that to me is the biggest drawback of this headphone is that the comfort, particularly right there, the weight doesn't bother me on its own uh, because I've had other headphones in here like this one that once you get a lobe strap in here to distribute the weight from the top of the head a little bit better. Um, I have no issues with the weight. Okay. Uh, of comfort wise there is just, it's too concentrated at the top of the head. So I think, you know, Jason and others there at Custom Cans, I, maybe that notch helps a lot. I am unable to say, um, but if it doesn't, maybe some more headband options for a reasonable cost would be something to look into. Okay, now as far as the accessories that sh this ships with, um, it's basically, it just comes via stock with the hi Feynman HE400 SE stock cable, looks like this. Okay, there is an included quarter inch adapter that comes with this, 6.35 millimeter adapter that comes with this. Okay, dual 3.5 millimeter on the headphone end. This cable is ergonomically all right, but again, it's, and I know some people are gonna freak out about this, but you know what, it is what it is. There's an extra treble peak in the consonant range that increases the sibilance when you use this cable. So I think you're gonna to wanna to spend a little bit extra to get a cable that doesn't do that. Heart cables work fine as an option. Um, I'm sure Audiophile Ninja cables help um, that a lot too. Okay, or you can get one of the options for a little bit extra price from Custom Cans. I only tried this one, which is probably a little bit too much money to pair with this headphone. Okay, but you know, I did try it with this because they came together, right, and, uh, and so forth. And that helped sonically too on uh, there. Okay, so I think that's about it for the build and the features and all of that. I will say that uh, Custom Cans, I think they offer a two year warranty, and they say they do about 70% of their business outside of the UK. So they are very comfortable shipping internationally if you choose to buy this product. Um, they, I think if I remember right from reading their website, they say it's like one to three business days delivery time inside the UK and seven to 10 days if you're going to Australia, the United States or Canada. Okay, those kinds of, th or those types of places there for international shipping. Okay, um, with that, let's go ahead and move on to the sound. 
And I'm going to mention my test gear here real quick because I tried a few different signal chains. And let's see. Um, I spent a fair amount of time listening to this on the Hi Feynman EF400 DAC amp. And then it spent some time on a really budget setup with the Topping D10 DAC, the first edition, the original of that, and the Monolith Liquid Spark amplifier. And let's see, I also got some time with this on the Shit Modius and Asgard 3 stack. And then I checked to see how it would scale up with my Berkeley Alpha Series 2 DAC into my Vioelectric HPA V281 head amp. And then really briefly here at the tail end, um, do I have it within reach? No, unfortunately. Um, I got an iFi Uno, little $80 DAC amp. And I just wanted to see if that would have the juice to power these. And that's about all the listening I did for it. Not really quality, but and yeah, it powers these pretty, pretty well. So um, at least from a power standpoint, okay, I need more time to ascertain the quality. But those are the, the signal chains in the gear that I use to power this. So then let's talk about the sound signature. Uh, and I don't normally do this, so we're going to cut to a... Uh, a picture of a frequency response graph that was sent to me by Jason from Custom Cans that compares the frequency response of the stock HE400SE to their modded version here. And I will make a few comments there about the frequency response and uh, then we'll come back on the other side and I will talk about other aspects of the sound that don't show up in the frequency response as much. So let's cut to that then we'll be right back. I don't normally show frequency response graphs on my channel because I have no measuring rig to do so, but Jason at Custom Cans sent me this and I thought that there may not be very many other sources to see this, so I will go ahead and show it and give a couple of comments about it. And so what we see here is a uh, plot that has both the modified HE400SE or the well-named HE400SEXY compared to the stock HE400SE here. and it looks to me like this plot is in comparison to a target because we don't really see an ear gain region. So I think what we have here is deviation from a target frequency response here in this plot. And there are a couple of things of note. For one, below about 600 hertz, you can see that the sexy has about 1 to 3 dB more energy all the way down to you know 20 hertz, the lowest region uh, we can hear. Uh, then the 400 SE, and that checks out with my listening as well. On the other end here, towards the right into the treble region, we see that the sharpest treble peak of the, the sexy is pushed about 2 kilohertz higher than it is for the uh, uh, stock 400 SE. Now, it can be tricky to measure frequency response up in the higher treble there, but I think that is in large part... We just generally see a little bit less treble energy here with the mod than we do the stock. And that helps with uh, sibilance. Like it's not, that mod is not as sharp or as, as, as sibilant, you know, sharp S's and T's and that sort of thing as the stock is. The biggest issue, at least for me, happens right around that one kilohertz region where you can see between about 600 hertz and then where they come back together again at two kilohertz, the mod is consistently close to, you know, three to five decibels higher in SPL than the stock. So there is a lot more mid-range presence. And I also interpret this here around the 900 to one kilohertz and then getting close to like 1.3-ish kilohertz and all that is that we have significantly more energy than a target. Um, there in that range so there is a little bit of shout and honk in the mod that is not present in the uh in the stock version which i don't like shout and honk but it didn't bother me a ton because it's not a huge or particularly sharp peak but it is detectable and does hurt like male vocal timbre i found a lot in there um, and that can get fatiguing to me after a while. So that's like the one, that's the biggest sonic issue with this mod, I, in my opinion. And the one where I think Custom Cans needs to make the most improvement, at least sonically. All right, let's get into some of the other stuff. 
All right, so that mid forwardness that I mentioned in the uh, in that frequency response graph there is about the only real drawback to the sound because other than that, I think there's a lot of really good stuff happening here. Um, and I want to emphasize that that slight bit of, of extra energy, at least compared to the stock HE400 SE from, you know, a 900-ish hertz to that 1.5 or 1.6 kilohertz, whatever it is, um, is, is not horrible, right? It's not a complete deal breaker. It, it, and I can usually enjoy the music, not usually, I mostly enjoyed the music that I listened to through here until I was like hitting about the two hour mark where that bit of forwardness in the mids was starting to get fatiguing for me. So even though I am a very, you know, one K one to three K sensitive listener and I don't like mid forwardness there, I was able to comfortably enjoy these for a, a fairly amount, a fair amount of time sonically in the headband hurts um, before that really became an issue, but it does become an issue for me at some point. Okay. But other than that, like the, the sound staging here opens up more like we've got a bigger sound stage in the sexy than we do in the stock. Okay, and we have a more holographic spatial presentation to go along with it. So more accurate and coherent imaging and, and spatial separation and all of that going on here. We do a better job of detail retrieval and resolution in the sexy than over the stock too. And that particularly shows up when passages get really busy. Like both headphones are going to do an all right job pulling out uh, room reverbs, ghost notes, you know, um, chair creaks in orchestral concerts, and, and like the zizzy, rosinous sound of uh, bows being dragged across strings, and like all of those kinds of things from a detail retrieval standpoint. When tracks get really busy, like big orchestral works, you know, symphonies and that sort of thing. The stock can start to get a little bit mushy, okay, especially in comparison to the sexy. Okay, uh, so these start to lose their instrument and vocal separation a little bit, at least more so than these when things get full and busy and loud. And so to me, that is an aspect of detail retrieval and resolution and advantage here. Now, these are not going to catch you know, uh, multi-hundred or multi-thousand dollar uh, planar magnetics in that regard, but they are among the stronger, strongest that I've heard in holding it together when things get busy, you know, at that under 250 US dollar price point. Okay, so that is really good. You also get a little bit more bass presence and slam and physicality, particularly in the low end than you get here and a little bit more bass texturing in the sexy than you get here as well. These also, I think I mentioned this in the frequency response graphs that I showed you, like these are less sibilant. In fact, they rarely ever get sibilant. The, the uh, treble is more tonally balanced. And so in that consonant range where you're just not a ton of sharp S's or T's or sibilants in there, like these can sometimes have, okay? So, yeah, these are definitely an overall sonic upgrade minus the personal quibble I have of that extra, you know, 1 to 1.5-ish 1 kilohertz um, energy, which to me, just as a personal preference, I don't really like. Others may like the increased vocal presence and all of that that comes with that um, in there too. Okay, so it really is an improvement from the stock. It's like a, a bit warmer, maybe more neutral, warm-ish not as sibilant, bigger staging, more holographic and all of that than the stock. So it's a comfortable upgrade there. Well done. All right, so let's come back to the question and the challenge that uh, Custom Cans put before me in like, is this the best sounding headphone under 200 English pounds? So let's just call it approximately under 250 US dollars. If you're gonna make a claim like that, in my opinion, you've got to punch up there with these and with these, okay? So this is the Biodynamic DT880 600 ohm, which I have personally uh, dual entry uh, removable cable modded, and then the Mastrop Plus Sennheiser HD6XX, which is essentially a Sennheiser HD650. And these both can regularly be obtained for that $250 or less price point. So 
the thing that I did um, is I compared these two and to this on my Berkeley Alpha Plus uh, Alpha S2 Plus Violetric HPA V281 amp because these two German legends here are well known for their ability to scale up and keep giving you more and more improved performance as signal chains get better and better, at least to a point. But they go way up before you hit their wall. So if you're going to be better than those, can you similarly scale up there? And the answer is kind of. <laughs> okay? um, it's not... It's not a universal truth here because to say that these scale up really well, and they do, tends to be like within a fairly narrow band of technicalities and performance that you're looking for. Like these, the, the buyers, you get their treble, which can be very hot and sharp on gear that is you know, more pr price appropriate to them. Um, and all of that, so the treble smooths out a lot when you get more control and then their spatial separation in particular like they're still really big sound stagers for what they are and for their price and they're very holographic in their spatial presentation so treble timbre when well controlled and spatial production spatial recreation are the strengths of this and that's what scales up really well with these Super organic and natural mid-range timbre is what these are really well known for, and that's what scales up with these. Now, this guy does not quite scale up as well as either of those two within those properties and within those traits that I just mentioned. So you're not going to get quite as rich treble timbre um, on these as you will on the buyers. And you're not going to get quite as rich mid-range timbre. I think that one kilohertz peak kind of gets in the way um, here on these as you do here. You are going to get a more holographic and well-balanced spatial presentation on these than you do on these. Okay, And you're going to get more bass presence and slam and overall physicality okay? and a less harsh fatiguing sound with like hard rock, heavy metal, you know, those kinds of things on these, then you're going to get on these. Okay, so, but other than that, I think in terms of like on balance, the resolution slash detail retrieval and all of that, like it's, it's pretty close to what these are capable of. Okay, so I, it was really hard to pick out a clear winner on the detail retrieval within the strengths, but this one I would say is probably a little bit better at detail retrieval across the entire frequency range rather than you know within the specialties the mids for the sen and the treble for the buyer on those okay um so i mean that's what i would say is you probably have um minus that 1k peak which may or may not be a problem for you you probably have a better all around package but i am and with this one than you do with those but i am going to say that i think it hits its wall like it, it, it hits its performance ceiling a little bit earlier than these two do. The, the Alpha plus the V281 way beyond um, where these things hit their wall. But to my sense is that these are going to hit their wall a little bit sooner. Okay, so then let's come back to the question of are these the best for, you know, 250 US dollars. Um, I don't know that I can say that they definitely are, but I can say comfortably that they are definitely a challenger and are most likely among one of the best options for $250 or less, at least sonically. I think Custom Cans needs to get that headband comfort figured out. I personally would like to see them tame that one kilohertz uh, region a little bit more, but outside of that, the resolution, the dynamics, the spatial presentation, and those sorts of things are very good and definitely puts it in the category of the top tier at that price point and may, means that it's an option you should check out that if you want a neutral slightly mid forward you know fairly holographic and like uh, and, and you know good bass extension good treble extension kind of headphone these are definitely some to check out there okay so overall well done 
I think you really can get these to outperform either the buyer or the send if you're spending um, similar money on a signal chain. These are going to give you a better experience overall, definitely, on lower priced signal gear as well. They just won't scale up quite as much in the treble and spatial presentation as these will or in the mid-range timbre as these will, if that matters to you. Okay. So there's that. Um, good job, guys. Um, just a couple of things I think you need to improve on there with these, but overall, really excellent, solid effort on those, particularly at the price point. I want to talk about this cable real quick, and then we can get on with life. Okay, um, so about this cable, you can see that, uh, so again, this is uh, 180 English pounds, which translates to about 216, 217 US dollars, right in that range. Ergonomically, for the most part, I like it. This, this like kind of lanyard style ribbon uh, right here, you can see it lays nice and flat and it's comfortable, like it just it lays flat on your desk and doesn't move around a whole lot. It, it strikes a nice balance of flexibility and durability. So this approach, I like, okay? Um, so this is unique and I think it ergonomically is nice. I like it. So like when it gets twisted up, which it does, it did before this video, all you really need to do is just run it through your fingers like this and it generally straightens itself out, which is nice and you don't have to sit there untangling it. Okay. the the connectors are of high quality so that's good the only quibble I would have is the one that they sent me they painted the barrel of the connector here on the amp end and I could do without that honestly I think that is an option I would option not <laughs> if I were to buy this because one it does make an even tighter fit in the, uh, the jack of an amplifier, which can be helpful sometimes, but not often. And then also, like, you can maybe see it there. I hope that shows up well. It's like you start to chip off and scrape the paint if you have a tight fit into the amplifier. And I get a little bit nervous about leaving, possibly leaving paint chips and all of that inside my uh, amplifier's uh, plug or jack. Like, I don't, I don't love that idea. So I would skip the paint on the barrel of the connector, okay? But otherwise, using this is a fairly pleasurable experience, I would say. Um, I enjoyed the feel of it. Sonically, it's definitely a step up from the high Feynman stock cable, easily. It really reigns in that sibilance region treble peak that is in the stock cable. I compared it sonically on my Hi Feynman HE400 SE. That was that, excuse me. On my HE1000 SE, because I wanted to see how well it scaled up, I compared it to my Corpse Cables Gravedigger, um, which uses the Cardask Golden Ratio uh, wire, whatever that combination is in there. And this wire was not quite as detailed overall and it didn't throw quite as big or as holographic a sound stage noticeable but not a huge difference so not as big not quite as accurate with the imaging and separation and all that but it was a little bit smoother in the uh, upper mids lower treble where the the corpse cable on that HE1000 SE can get a little bit forward and aggressive somewhere in that range. So like I was listening to a, a Mastodon on there a little bit because Mastodon is a band that can get very aggressive with the, the tone that they put on their electric guitars a lot. Um, and just the way they record things, it can get really aggressive in some of the upper uh, mid-range lower treble where some of the higher harmonics and higher notes of an electric guitar are. And that could be, a, a, it was a little bit smoother and less fatiguing through that range on this cable than it was on the uh, Cardass. Okay, but it um, also came at the expense of the higher treble. The cymbals were a little bit more tonally balanced with the corpse cable, which uses the Cardass wire, than they were here. Um, and again, I think there was just a little bit more overall resolution through the entire frequency range and a little bit bigger soundstage on the corpse cable. But then the corpse cable, I'm quite sure, is more than 215-ish 
uh, US dollars. So this is a pretty solid cable, I would say, for the price. And you don't need to consider it just for one of their mods. You can get this for any headphone that these will fit, which is most Focals. Um, let's see, hi fi -mans. What else uses dual 3.5? There's a lot that do, okay? But anything that that will fit, it's a, it's a solid option to consider. And again, it's ergonomically nice. Feels nice to use. All right, so thanks again to Jason and the team at Custom Cans for sending me the HE400 Sexy uh, for review. I did enjoy the experience. It is a solid effort. I've given them a couple of critiques and areas to improve. But overall, I do think it is one of the stronger options out there at the price point and something that you, can consider, you the viewers, can consider as is um, if this description of sound is something appealing to you. And again, I really appreciate them for just telling me to be brutally honest about what I hear there. Like, that was, that was brave and cool of them, and I appreciate it. So, I am Wave Theory. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, do all those things. Please check out my Patreon. Please check out my PayPal and all of those things. And as always, thanks for watching and enjoy the music.